Hello, people of God. It's good to be with you and to open God's Word once again together. Uh, please turn with me in Exodus to the book of Exodus chapter 28. We want to think about the priest's garments that we hear described here, Exodus chapter 28. And I'm going to read uh, the entire chapter. It's a long chapter, but we'll think uh, about what we read here. Well, let's pay careful attention, for this is God's own word. Then bring near to you Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him from among the people of Israel to serve me as priests. Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. You shall speak to all the skillful whom I have filled with the spirit of skill, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him for my priesthood. These are the garments that they shall make, a breastpiece, an ephod, a robe, a cloak of checkerwork, a turban, and a sash. They shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, and his sons to serve me as priests. They shall receive gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen. And they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and of fine twined linen, skillfully worked. It shall have two shoulder pieces attached to its two edges, so that it may be joined together. And the skillfully woven band on it shall be made like it, of one piece with it, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen. You shall take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel, six of their names on the one stone, and the names of the remaining six on the other stone, in the order of their birth. As a jeweler engraves signet, so you shall engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of Israel. You shall enclose them in settings of gold filigree, and you shall set the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as stones of remembrance for the sons of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders for remembrance. You shall make settings of gold filigree and two chains of pure gold twisted like cords, and you shall attach the corded chains to the settings. You shall make a breast piece of judgment in skilled work in the style of the ephod you shall make it. Of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen you shall make it. It shall be square and doubled, a span its length and a span its breadth. You shall set in it four rows of stones, a row of sardis, a sardius, topaz, and carbuncle shall be the first row, and the second row an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond, and the third row a jacinth, an, ag an agate, and an amethyst, and the fourth row a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold filigree. There shall be twelve stones with their names according to the names of the sons of Israel. They shall be like signets, each engraved with its name for the twelve tribes. You shall make for the breastpiece twisted chains like cords of pure gold, and you shall make for the breastpiece two rings of gold, and put the two rings on the two edges of the breastpiece. And you shall put the two cords of gold in the two rings at the edges of the breastpiece. The two ends of the two cords you shall attach to the two settings of filigree, and so attach it in front to the shoulder pieces of the ephod. You shall make two rings of gold and put them at the two ends of the breastpiece, on its inside edge next to the ephod. And you shall make two rings of gold and attach them in front to the lower part of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod, as it seem above the skillfully woven band of the ephod. And they shall bind the breastpiece by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, so that it may lie on the skillfully woven band of the ephod, so that the breastpiece shall not come loose from the ephod. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel in the breastpiece of judgment on his heart when he goes into the holy place to bring them to regular remembrance before the Lord. And in the breastpiece of judgment you shall put the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be on Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. Thus Aaron shall bear the judgment of the people of Israel on his heart before the Lord regularly. You shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue. It shall have an opening for the head in the middle of it with a woven binding around its opening, like, like the opening in a garment, so that it may not tear. On its hem you shall make pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet yarns around its hem with, bell, with bells of gold between them, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate around the hem of the robe, and it shall be on Aaron when he ministers, and its sound shall be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord and when he comes out so that he does not die. You shall make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it like the engraving of a signet holy to the Lord, and you shall fasten it on the turban by a cord of blue. It shall be on the front of the turban. It shall be on Aaron's forehead 
And Aaron shall bear any guilt from the holy things that the people of Israel consecrate as their holy gifts. It shall regularly be on his forehead, that they may be accepted before the Lord. You shall weave the coat in checkerwork of fine linen, and you shall make a turban of fine linen, and you shall make a sash embroidered with needlework. For Aaron's sons you shall make coats and sashes and caps, you shall make them for glory and beauty, and you shall put them on Aaron your brother, and on his sons with him, and shall anoint them and ordain them and consecrate them that they may serve me as priests. You shall make for them linen undergarments to cover their naked flesh. They shall reach from the hips to the thighs, and they shall be on Aaron and on his sons when they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place, lest they bear guilt and die. This shall be a statute forever for him and for his offspring after him. Uh, thus far, the reading of God's word, may he bless it to us. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we see going on here is uh, the importance of the, the clothing that Aaron and his sons will wear, the importance of what the priests will wear. Um, we sometimes have that saying that clothes make the man. Um, and like a lot of things in our English language, that really probably can be traced back to Shakespeare. Um, in Hamlet, Polonius, when he's giving farewell advice to his son Laertes, advises him uh, to dress well because he says the apparel oft proclaims the man. Um, and that's really what we see here in the apparel that, that Aaron is to wear, that his appearance is going to proclaim something of what he does, his duty. Um, it's going to picture for us uh, something in the in the high priest that tells us about what his role is before God. Um, and that's why, in a lot of ways, the description of Aaron's clothing and the clothing of the high priest and, and the priest comes before uh, we read about, excuse me, about their anointing uh, for their work. Um, but their appearance is even telling us something important about the role and the function that they serve. Uh, as one commentator put it, the garments were to express not what Aaron was in himself, but what he represented, what he was meant to be, and what his office required him to be. Uh, the garments are figures of the true. By his robes, the ideal priest is revealed. And of course, in revealing Aaron as the ideal priest and what he was to represent for God's people, uh, we're getting a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ and what he meant uh, to the people of God. Uh, so what do these garments really teach us about the ideal high priest? Well, the first thing we see is that he is the one who carries God's people. Uh, we see that really being pictured in uh, what we're told about the ephod and the breast piece of judgment. Uh, those two things, as we see uh, going on here, um, sorry for the light that's coming across my face. It's the, the setting sun that's coming through the, the holes in the blinds, so I really can't do anything about that. I'm trying to move forward and back to get it out of my face, but I can't really seem to, to find the right spot. But anyway, um, all that to say, uh, the apparel is what reveals Aaron's function, and one of his functions is to carry the people of God. That's what's really seen in this um, ephod and this breast piece of judgment that is pictured for them. Um, the ephod, it's kind of hard for us maybe to picture exactly what the ephod looked like. Maybe in Southern California, it's easiest to think of it as kind of a poncho. It was a solid piece of fabric um, with, of made of fine linen, uh, blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, and a hole that was cut in it for your head, essentially. So it was one garment, and then it had a belt that could tie the two ends together. Um, and on the shoulder of this sort of ephod that would come over the priest's head, on the shoulder were two onyx stones in gold with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel engraved on them. So six names on each shoulder. And then there were gold chains that would connect the ephod with the breast piece. Um, but the main focus of the ephod is a garment to which the breast piece of judgment is attached. And so along with this golden plate that we're going to think about later that was on his turban, this, this breast piece of judgment was the centerpiece of the high priest's garment. Um, it's one solid piece made of golden fabric. Um, again, we see the familiar materials that we've seen again and again in verse 15. Um, maybe think of it like a chest piece in a suit of armor. It would have been a breast piece that would hang down on the front of the ephod that was connected there, and it was square, and it had um, four rows of stones in it, three stones in each row. And each stone has on it engraved one of the names of the tribes of Israel. And so we, we translate these stones as best we can from, from the Hebrew. Um, we're not sure precisely what all of these stones are. Um, I think we do the best translating we can of, of what kind of stones they would use. But it's very clear, right? They're all kinds of different colored, uh, precious and semi-precious stones. 
And all of this was to remind God's people of what was the high priest's task. Uh, His purpose was to carry God's people. That's the purpose of the ephod, that kind of tied poncho, and the purpose of the breast piece of judgment that hung on the ephod. Um, And what was that all to represent? Well, first of all, you see the names on the shoulders. Um, And so the high priest carries God's people on his shoulders. Uh, Throughout the book of Moses, when you carry a burden, you carry it on your shoulders. And so what is that picturing for God's people? That their names are on the shoulders of the high priest. Um, It symbolizes that they're being carried by the strength of the high priest. He's shouldering the burdens of God's people uh, to bring them into remembrance before God's presence. Um, that's what, the, uh, that's what the, I, the symbolism is. The high priest is carrying the burdens of God's people in before the Lord on, on their behalf. It symbolizes his strength to carry and shoulder the burdens of God's people as he brings them before God's presence. And then the breast piece that's, that's hanging in front of him, it shows us that the high priest is not just carrying the burdens of God's people on his shoulders. He's also carrying them on his heart. Um, That's where the people are to be. That's what the symbolism of that breast piece was, to put all the individual names of the tribes right there on his heart. That's where it was to, that's why it's attached to the ephod the way it is, so that it sits on his heart. Um, And what is that a reminder? It's a reminder that they are carried on his shoulders by his strength, but they're also carried on his heart by his love. Um, When the priest goes into then the holy place, he's carrying the people not only on his shoulders but in his heart, not only by his strength but with his love. Um, He's doing that to show the great love he must have for the people that he serves and that as he carries them on his shoulders and on his heart, he carries them into the presence of the Lord. He goes into the tabernacle with them carrying them in that sense. And what did the tabernacle represent? Well, we've already seen it represented the heavenly places. And you'll notice his garments are are made out of the same materials as the tabernacle, right? Fine twined linen, blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, pure gold. I mean, this is the kind of thing that we read over and over again. You say, do we really need to keep hearing this repetition? But what is it doing for us? It's reminding us we've heard all of this before, and what did, where did we hear all of this? We heard all of this in connection with the tabernacle, right? That place that represented heaven and the heaven above where God dwells, right? The, the world that God has created. And so if the high priest looks like that and is able to go in there, uh, what is it symbolizing to the people of God? It's symbolizing that the high priest is the only one who is qualified to bring God's people into the heavenly holy places, right? That he goes in where they can't go. Um, And his uniform, in that sense, really makes him a heavenly man. He looks like the tabernacle. He's dressed and equipped for tabernacle work. And so with the names on his shoulder and on his heart, he identifies with God's people. But the linen and the colors and the gold identify him with the tabernacle, with the heavenly place. And so in this way, what does he serve? He serves as a picture both of the people and of the holy things and the holy place. And so he's a man of the people and he's a man of heaven in that sense. And that was what was being pictured to God's people in this, in this outfit. And if we think about it that way and how this was all meant to, to paint that picture for them, then we see why we have a perfect picture in this of Jesus Christ, who is our ideal high priest. right? Because Jesus Christ comes as our only high priest who by his strength carries us on his shoulders into the heavenly places. What does Jesus do as our high priest? He he has us on his shoulders. He carries our burdens into the presence of his Father. Uh, Think of what Hebrews 9.24 says. For Christ has entered not not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Uh, He carries us by his strength on his shoulders to his heavenly Father to carry our burdens. Um, And he will return in glory one day as our only high priest to carry us on his shoulders into heavenly glory. Uh, Much like that shepherd in the parable who finds the lost sheep and returns with it on his shoulders. There's a a sense in which when the Lord comes again in glory, he's going to carry us on his shoulders into the heavenly places. And we have a Lord who not only carries us on his shoulders, but carries us on his heart. 
Um, that wonderful reminder we have from the Apostle Paul in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Um, we are on his heart as well as on his shoulders. And we need both as God's people, don't we? We need Christ to carry us by his strength on his shoulders. We need Christ to carry us in his love. And what do we need him to do? By his strength and on his shoulders and in his love, on his heart, to carry us into the holy places. Um, and, and what did the high priest's uniform try to picture for them? That he's, when he, he's carrying out these functions, he is a man from heaven carrying the names of people into the heavenly places. Um, and you can see how he's a picture then of Jesus Christ because he is the true man from heaven. Right, Aaron's clothes made him symbolically a man from heaven, but he was a man just like the rest of the people who had his own failings and his own troubles and his own sin. Um, but who is Jesus? He's truly the heavenly man. He comes from heaven. Um, he is from that place into which he goes to minister, um, but he joins himself in the life of his people so that that man from heaven becomes a man of the people in his incarnation and can be for us both a true and righteous man who can advocate before the Father, and also the true man from heaven come down to reveal the nature of the heavenly place into which he goes as our only high priest. Um, and he is someone who is now exalted above the heavens and is really ministering in the true holy places of which the tabernacle was only a copy. But you see how the Old Testament, even though all of these things have expired and we don't have a priesthood anymore, we don't have a tabernacle anymore, all of these things still serve and function to teach us important things about who Jesus would come to be for his people. And what a tremendous thing it is for us as God's people to still remember that even though we don't have any of these things that are described in Exodus anymore, they've all passed away and been fulfilled in Christ, we still have a high priest. We still have a high priest who is holy to the Lord. We still have a high priest who carries his people on his shoulders by his strength, who carries his people on his heart in his love and carries us into the true heavenly places where he can minister on our behalf, carrying us before the presence of our Father until that great day comes when the kingdom he has inaugurated uh, will be consummated in glory and he will carry us with him as his people into the heavenly place. By his strength and by his love, uh, we will come to that place. What a wonderful day that will be. And we will be transformed by his spirit so that we too will be people of heaven and belong there. Uh, what a wonderful picture this is of the Lord Jesus Christ and his high priestly work. And what can we do but praise God who's revealed this to us. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for this picture that you gave your people that even in past generations they could see what Christ was meant to be. And we thank you that uh, he has fulfilled the priesthood. He's come on a different order not the order of Aaron and his sons, but in the order of Melchizedek, that he is the only high priest we'll ever need. We thank you that he still carries us on his shoulders. What a wonderful thing it is to know that he carries our burdens before you as our mediator and king, and that he also carries us on his heart, that that same great love that caused him to come into the world and suffer and die for sinners um, has caused him to go up to heaven with you to reign at your right hand, that he might ever intercede for us. What a wonderful thing to know that we are carried into that heavenly place even now on the shoulders of our Lord and on his heart, that he brings us there in his prayers and in his mediation, and one day soon he's coming again in glory to take us to that place where we will be with him forever. Uh, how we long to be people of heaven, to be perfected after the image of your Son. Um, and while on earth, Lord, we pray that you would continue to conform us to his image by your Spirit, that we might more and more become people of heaven, that place to which we are going. We thank you for the work of our high priest and Lord Jesus Christ and hear us for we pray in his name. Amen. Right, people of God, it's been good to spend this time with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.